Hello, Wanderers, and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series set in the Game of Thrones world. Here we are following House Blackwood and, more in particular, Lord Titus of Blackwood Vale. Now, you may remember in the previous episodes, we did happen to find ourselves a bit of a doppelganger, a look-alike, among the streets. And we brought him into our court, gave him the position of our chancellor, even, uh, a very esteemed position, only to find the man sleeping with our wife. And although she denied any wrongdoing, we only have one eye. We lost an eye in battle, and our doppelganger has two. So I'm not sure exactly how that mistake was made. But after discovering this, we obviously sent Theobald out to the wall to be a member of the Night's Watch. And we thought that this was over and done with. But it seems not. Theobald has returned, deserting the Night's Watch, which is a, a mortal offense. And now he has returned, claiming to be the Lord of Blackwood Vale himself. He says he is the one. I don't know how he can possibly... Uh, pull this off or thinks that he can pull this off considering the differences between us but he seems to seems willing to try so here we have this event theobald bursts into my throne room stinking of hashish smoke and sweat his drifting bloody eyes scowl at the area around my head as he lazily staggers towards me cackling like a madman all the way imposter that <laughs> Beguiling fiend is not Lord Titus of Blackwood Vale. I am the real Lord Titus of Blackwood Vale. Though an obvious lie, my court seems somehow convinced that my true identity is thrown into dispute. As Theobald draws his weapon, it becomes clear that violence is the only answer. Uh, we are going to choose this option. There can only be one, and we are going to engage in a duel with Theobald here. We stalk around each other, weighing our weapon, weighing our options and our weapons. He hefts a fearsome sword while I grip my own uh, sword and dagger. Uh, we are going to probably just go right at him here, attack swiftly. Theobald does not have the level of training that we do in combat. Whatever he may have learned at the wall will not match what we have learned over 30 years as the Lord of Blackwood Vale fighting in many wars. Putting all my strength into my first strike, I leap straight for him, brandishing my dagger high in a powerful cleave that sends him reeling. Well aware that he is utterly outmatched, he hurls himself at me bodily, forcing me backwards with all the desperation of the doomed. Uh, here we go. He'll, we can... Yeah, let's try to... Surprise attack. Spotting a weakness, I throw myself at him, brandishing my dagger. Spotting an opportunity, he lunges forward, headbutts me hard in the face. I reel backward, backwards, wrong-footed, so he's just wildly slashing at us, probably high and drunk on whatever he took that gave him the audacity to come in here and attempt this. Uh, let us go and try to... Uh, let's, uh, let's focus on our guard here. And there we go, single combat victory. My guard... Holds resolute, keeping me safe from my opponent. He tries a couple of quick slashes, but nothing I can't easily dodge. Gambling on his timidness, I lunge forward with a powerful cleave that knocks him totally off balance. Not stopping to breathe, I boot him hard in the knee, and Theobald falls with a heavy thud. This gives me ample time to position myself for a gruesome kill. He yields within second. I am victorious. And there we go. Now the event here. As my victory is declared over the imposter, any who would have doubted my true identity appear to have been silenced. My guards take hold of Theobald, who still hisses and jeers at me, screeching about the kingdom they have been denied. Although Theobald still claims to be the real me, there will be few to listen to him from the confines of my dungeon. And he is now our prisoner. Well... We shall deal with this swiftly, I imagine, here. Let's go over to our prisoners. Theobald, we let you live when you mocked us in our own home, in our own bed even, and let you live, sent you to the Night's Watch, and then you deserted 
and returned here claiming to be the rightful lord? There's only one answer for that, and that is obviously execution. And as is proper amongst the followers of the old gods, uh, a lord does not hand off this duty to an executioner. No, we will do it ourselves. And so we take our sword and we will be done with Theobald. And what a delightful day it is. Uh, maybe not delightful, but uh, the wind is refreshing. The sun is warm. Insects trip happily in the other. Go. Clearly we're happy to be done with this, though. This is the best day of my life. That's an option. Mm, maybe not. I think it is just simply time to move on. We do have our cousin, I believe. Yeah. In prison. Prison for 11 months. Uh, I think he was... What were you in prison for? Fornication or something like that. Maybe we'll send you over to the uh, Black Watch as well. Or Night's Watch, I should say. And so it is done. Theobald has been executed. And hopefully that will finally bring this matter to an end. And we can have some peace here in Blackwood Vale for the moment. So... As things are quite peaceful in the Iron Throne for now, I think we're going to let a little bit of time pass and just see where things go over the next few years. And if anything important happens, we'll jump right back in. So a couple of years have passed, but finally, uh, after a little while, we have come to this event. I am out with my retinue in Raven Tree Hall when the boat twists and takes us in close to the plains. It is there that I see it once more, shimmering in the sun, the white wolf. I turn to alert the others, but as I turn back, the wolf is already gone. It taunts me, we think. Indeed, we do I wish to finish our, our duel, our hunt with this white wolf that we've been seeking for many years it seems to taunt us is it even real at this point we may not even know what do we have here the skies bode ill the wind wails and my servants shake before the coming maelstrom an awful day to be traveling the wilderness shabby hovels dominate this strange corner of the land filthy and tiny we've come upon a, a lone half decent country house but the dwelling is owned by my foul rivals, Jonas Bracken. I'm being lashed by the mountain storm, yet all I feel is the old pain from when Lord Jonas of Southstone and I became rivals. Maybe he is far away, maybe fortune is kind, and his alluring sister, Caitlin, will be there to welcome me. Eh, I mean, we are married, but... Uh, let's see, what do we have? What options do we have here? Hmm. A hole in the ground would be preferable. Hmm. Our swords will secure a shelter. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if we're going to just go and attack this way. Hmm. No, I think I think that we would rather suffer uh, suffer out in the cold rather than take the hospitality of a bracken. So we've unfortunately gained the trait ill during that time, but it is what it is. Mental break dark thoughts. Uh, we are basically just ru ruminating over all the things that we've done wrong in our life. Hmm. I think that we, we must be strong, resist these dark thoughts. The time has come to treat you cold. While I'm fairly certain a simple tincture would suffice, the choice is yours, my lord. Uh, indeed, do no more than is necessary. The steam rose from the cup as Walgrave stirred the green powder in. He explained that the healing properties of the herb at length before motioning me to drink it. The root is in there, too, he boastfully revealed. Okay, sure. The bitter herb turned out to be just what I needed for now. The worst of the symptoms seemed to be alleviated, and the world seems a little brighter. Excellent. Ah. I have prowled through documents both ancient and of less certain provenance. I have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lordship 
Uh, Rightful Lord of Stonehenge. All that is missing is one little brime. Hmm. So we are attempting to to build up a claim here in Southstone, but I'd rather just wait it out and try to get a claim on the duchy itself. So we're not going to we're not going to accept that one. It'd be hard to justify saying that the ancestral seat of House Bracken is, actually belongs to us. I think probably most people would disagree, but there might be some who could agree with us to say that due to our position of influence and power that we should be the rightful ruler, rulers of Southstone uh, proper. Ah, and we seem to be feeling much better. I'm going to trade our son in swordsmanship, and he seems to be learning quite well, actually. As you can see, he is a very skilled warrior. Indeed, he has continued training with the sword since that fateful day when he accidentally slew a man in that tourney bout um, at 12 years old. Uh, keep that in mind. But uh, he seems to be doing well as a squire, and he seems to be get it becoming a reasonable young man brave arrogant but calm and content as well so and he has just come of age uh he has a basic understanding of warfare but not much more than that his skill with the sword he is actually as you can see here a formidable fighter though so he may not be much of a commander but he is very skilled with the with the sword. While everyone in Westeros knows Queen Nymeria, I find myself enthralled while reading a passage on her journey. After the fall of Prince Garen to Valyria, Nymeria gathered her people and sailed to find a new home. Though the journey was long with several failed attempts at, an, at finding this new home, they eventually arrived in Dorne. Queen Nymeria joined with House of Martell, and together they were able to unite the peninsula. Hmm. The Roynar fought valiantly, even killing dragons. Indeed, they did. Uh, let's get this unyielding defender trait from that. Ah, and we can knight our squire. Here we go. So, young Brynden, our eldest son, can be knighted. He gains prestige, um, increased opinion, and he will become a knight. Indeed, so we shall we shall complete the ceremony and he shall be he shall be made a knight, so look at that. Pretty pretty good character actually. Yeah, very skilled warrior, in fact. Uh, as you can see, he is uh, probably not maybe not one of the top warriors in Westeros, but he's definitely more skilled than the average warrior for sure. Uh, we could even gift him, uh, we can't gift him our dagger, unfortunately, but he's quite skilled. Good, good character. And he will, he will one day take over for us in the future. Providing he survives, of course. So I have decided that we are going to go on a pilgrimage. And this pilgrimage will take us to Winterfell. So we're going to ride to the north to meet with the Starks, to meet Lord Ned Stark, and just uh, go to the place where people still worship the old gods here in the south in the Riverlands and beyond the Neck. Very few people are worshiping the old gods. We are one of the few lords left. So going up north, and being among our fellow worshippers of the old gods uh, will be an excellent diversion for us. So let us depart for Winterfell. Uh, it's a long journey, but it will be no doubt worth it. And there's peace in the land. So, well, relative peace here. As you can see, we have seem to have countered some bandits. I wake to the noise of chaos in camp, but it only takes me a few moments to realize what is happening. We are under attack. Bandits are swarming our tents and wagons, while our guards do what they can to resist. 
Where is my sword? I shall drive these dogs away. Indeed, we shall. And we successfully fend off the bandits ourselves, taking no injuries in the process. We are indeed one of the more capable warriors in Westeros as well, but I think that our son shall one day surpass us. For every week that passes, my fellowship grows ever smaller. Some have gone as far as they could before they need to return home. Others have met with less fortunate ends, indeed, like the bandits. Most worrying is the fact that my group of personal guards is thinning out at an alarming rate. The fact alone shows what a treacherous journey this could be. Hmm. I think that... Uh, let's see here. Define protection. Some of the locals seem like they would make fierce guards. We could hire some, some northerner guards. Why not? I'm not opposed to that. They seem like good sorts. These northerners. Finally here, body and soul of the great godswood of Winterfell. As the elder offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that had to happen for the gods to bring me here at this moment in time. So we sit in front of the weirwood tree, and as you can see, we have now gained a good amount of piety and gained the trait pilgrim. And we shall return home. Hmm. Once again, we're just gonna we're gonna hope to get this uh, touchy claim here. We are known for our dedication to our faith. Excellent. We are a devoted servant. My journey has been a long one, but I finally come home again. With while much remains the same, something has changed in how the elders treat me. I have undergone a journey of a holy man, but and they insist it has changed something about me, whether I can see it or not. Indeed, we just feel closer to to the old gods of the land. So, pretty good little trait there. Now, some of you may be wondering, what can we do against the Ironborn? The Ironborn who attacked us, killed our brother. Unfortunately, there is peace in, in the Seven Kingdoms right now. And we don't have much recourse to deal with the Ironborn simply due to the fact that the king's peace resides over all the realm and the ironborn are are ostensibly part of the seven kingdoms as well we we may have to put aside our vengeance upon them for the moment but it may be possible to to get our revenge at some point in the future as you can see, our son Lucas has come to age. He is an adequate bargainer. Uh, not a terrible character here. A decent, reasonable warrior. He is knighted here, as you can see as well. A brave, diligent, humble, a zealous as well. So not a terrible character at all. And he can even get married to his, to his betrothed. Since I started my search, reports are coming in from all over the realm of people spotting the powerful white wolf. To shift through the accounts and sort fact from fiction is a huge task. If only the reports were more reliable. My steward can sort this. Mm, indeed. Let's have our steward take care of this matter for us. Ah, we are invited to a feast by our vassal, Lord Brendan of Flockshade. It will be my pleasure to come. Hopefully the food is good at this. What started as an ordinary feast became an exceptional one thanks to the presence of Lord Bernar. We spoke all evening about all manner of subjects, and as things would have it, we seemed to have a lot in common. Had such a good time with him. Oh, seems like we made a friend. Lord Bernar of Pebble Keep. Good to meet you, Lord Bernar. Ah, but a dilemma. The feast is dwindling down, and I find myself deep in conversation with my subversive chancellor, Lord Brendan. He inquires about my opinion on court alliances, a subject he is deeply interested in himself. It's a subject that fascinates me as well. Could not care less. I'm more interesting. I think, yeah, it is a subject that fascinates us. Uh, let us become friends here, if we can. Indeed, we are with Lord Brendan. Farewell, my friend, as we return home from the feast. We could call for a hunt ourselves, and we do have we have the money for it. 
Uh, let us do so. It's going to reduce our stress a little bit, which is good. Ah, the spear lies perfectly balanced in my hand as I judge the distance to the wolf. My son and heir, Brendan, is crouching next to me, hefting his own spear. Uh, we could let our son uh, get the strike here on it. You know what? Why not? I feel like in this uh, in this situation with our 17-year-old son, Sir Brendan, uh, hunting alongside us, even though we're going to take a little stress because we would like to do it ourselves due to our arrogance, we will let our son take the shot. And it seems like he was successful. The hunt went very well when we return home invigorated. We should probably meditate at the Werewood here. Somebody's trying to kill our cousin. Well, once we get some information on that, then we can deal with it. And I think that we are going to meditate here in front of the tree for calm. There we go. We're no longer as overwhelmed by stress. We could even host a feast. It's going to take a good chunk of our money here, but I think we can afford it. We'll host the feast ourselves. Welcome, friend. The great table seating the upper nobility on the dais gave a loud crack, and a moment later it gave an in under the weight of food and gilded decoration. As my most distinguished guest and I had to be fitted in among the lower nobility, I ended up close to my son Lucas. Lord Danwell took it poorly, however, and told everyone it was a grave injustice to be seated with lords and ladies barely better than commoners. Acting quite the opposite, Lord Brynden displayed humility and grace among his lessers. That's why we're friends with Lord Brynden. Lucas and I ended up talking all evening, and we agreed it should not be the last time we feasted and laughed in each other's company. Ah, so... Our son here and us uh, are now friends, so. And the guests leave. I am I'm, uh, enjoying, clearly, uh, as you can see, we are an eager, revel, eager reveler now, so. We're enjoying our peacetime uh, as much as we can, anyway. And to that end, I think it may be time to put down our sword here. Uh, at least we don't need to be wielding it quite so, quite so often as, as we seem to be doing. So there we go. Let's put our sword away. Here we go. Finally, I've prowled through documents, both ancient and of less certain provenance. I've finally found enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of. Stonehenge, seeing as he worships even the faith of the seven, I could even argue you have a claim on the lordship of South Stone by divine right. Indeed, press going way, way back. It's clear that we do have this claim on South Stone. So this is going to put us a little bit in debt, but we can probably take out a loan to deal with that. But yes, indeed, all of South Stone will be mine. And there you have it. We now have a claim uh, here, and we can we can potentially push that claim in the next episode. But until then, thank you for watching.